Hey there YouTube, and hello Ninth Age Communities. This is Alex with Evershade Gaming, here to bring you another battle report. Today I played a 4500 point game using the .204 version of the beta rules with uh, the Saurian Ancients that I'm borrowing from Mooksy against uh, our friend Mike Smith's Orcs and Goblins. Now uh, this is in preparation for Strength in Numbers, a uh, tournament held in Toledo, Ohio every year. It's a four person team tournament kind of like a mini ETC and go on for the past few years now and we kind of have a, a bit of a reputation to uphold even though we're not bringing the same team as usual. We played on the ETC map number 10. As you can see here we got a good smattering of equally distributed terrain, a couple of walls, water feature, good old ruins, cliffs, all sorts of good stuff. The uh, scenario we played was an encircle deployment along with a capture the flag secondary objective. And uh, since I won the roll for table side, I took the big center, the defender, and then uh, Mike took the attacker. Going into army lists, here was mine. Uh, sorry for the low quality on the text here. I'm going to try and make these images bigger next time. I've got a quad lord here. He's using the uh, Path of Alchemy. He's the army general. He's the battle standard bear. He's got the grasp of the immortal, so he'll have that uh, plus one to channel and plus one to cast along with Train from Birth, so he'll have the one spell, so he'll have that Quicksilver Lash. And for special equipment, he's got the Binding Scroll and the Magical Heirloom, because I really love that hereditary spell. Then for Core here, we've got, uh, looks like, 26 Saurian Warriors with full command, the Crocodile Totem, and then we took a Flaming Standard on them, because, I mean, we're taking Alchemy. We've got to have that Flaming Standard. After that, then, we've got a unit of Skink Braves here with uh, just Hang Open Shield, Musician. Real cheap, good scoring. Then a unit of Raptor Riders and Special, just nothing, not even a musician, which I will need to correct for the next list. I will definitely need a musician on them. Then we've got a unit of, looks like, 22 Temple Guard with full command and a rending banner for those long, protracted combats that these stubborn units like to get into. Then we've got a unit of six Chameleons, and two Salamanders, two Spearbacks, a Taurosaur with an engine, and a Taurosaur with a giant bow. Pretty simple. Running a kind of shield list, trying to conserve as many points as I can since the other three players on my team for strength and numbers are taking pretty aggressive lists, which we'll probably see if we do a recap video. Then going into Mike's list here, he's got a Goblin Witch Doctor. He's a master of witchcraft on a wolf with a magical heirloom. Pretty simple. Then we've got a Chief BSB, Iron Orc with a shield, and he's got a Green Tide Banner, a Lucky Charm, and a Panic Protection Pension for going up against those scary characters. Then we've got an Orc Warlord, a Feral Boy with some light armor, Omen of the Apocalypse for all those extra attacks and strength and such, Potion of Swiftness so he can assure to go first, and Tuck Tech Scar to make him a little bit tougher, even though he's not so worried about Lethal Strike. Then we've got a Orc Warlord of Iron Orc, he's the General, he's got paired weapons on a Warbore with a Binding Scroll, a Death Cheater for some protection, and the Shady Shank in for some extra damage output. And let's see, into Core. He's got a unit of Feral Ed Bashers with full command, a Mammoth Stabber. Then they've got the Green Tide Banner as well, armed with spears. Because honestly, if you're taking orcs on foot at all nowadays, they better have spears. Because spears is just the best thing for these guys. The extra AP on top of the strength 5 until they lose, it's just a winning combination. And then in the last unit he's got in his core section, a unit of 5 Orc Boar Riders, uh, just a bunker for his Witch Doctor there. Uh, common orcs, shields, standard, banner discipline, super simple. Then going into the special section, he's got a Nasher Wrecking Team, another Nasher Wrecking Team for just a little bit of backfield protection, maybe a little bit of harassment of the front lines. We got 23 iron orcs with uh, full command and the green tide banner, a unit of mounted ed bashers, 11 of them, with uh, just normal common orcs, lances, shields, and uh, Mykonox Totem to cancel out any cool weapons that the enemies got there, and then a scrap wagon. So yeah, pretty simple. And I thought my list was small. But we'll see, he uses it to pretty good effect. As far as spells go, here's what I took. Pretty uh, standard load out there. And uh, Mike's witchcraft spells were Raven's Wing, Deceptive Glamour, Twisted Effigy, and Will of the Wisp, with of course his hereditary Bring the Pain. And I went to deployment. Uh, we went back and forth a little bit, but uh, ultimately I ended up plopping before he did and got a plus four for the roll to go first. So there was a little bit of space in there where he could have had the opportunity, but uh, we can see that I went ahead and put my spears on the left there with a salamander right next to him. Two of uh, the torosaurs stacked up 
between them and the Temple Guard. Then we've got the other Salamander, the unit of Razorbacks, the small unit of Skinks just hiding behind that hill where they will stay for most of the game. We've got a unit of Raptor Riders, and then we've just got my Chameleons waiting to be deployed in Scouts. For Mike's deployment, he's got his two Nasher teams on the left, my left flank. He's got a unit of Iron Orcs there, it's got his BSB, he's got the wagon there, deployed sideways of course, for that extra couple inches in the first turn random movement. Then we've got the uh, Mage Bunker there, with the uh, Boar Riders right behind him, so he'll need to get out of the way if he wants to make good use of his boars early. And you can see he's got his feral orcs there on the right side, and so not a whole lot of protection on the right hand side, but I'm probably not going to want to be over there for most of the game anyway, since I've got his war cry to worry about on those uh, boar riders, in addition to the attribute from witchcraft, which is just going to speed his units up all the more. Honestly, I'm telling you, if you're playing orcs and goblins right now in the .204 version of the beta rules, if you're not playing witchcraft, you're doing something wrong. Like, the synergy between your fast units getting sped up by witchcraft is just fantastic. So then uh, into scouts, I just place my chameleons right down in front of those raptors, hopefully to get some extra shots down on those manglers in the early turns of the game. And here was turn one. Uh, I just moved everybody up as far as possible. I knew that uh, considering it was capture the flags, if I wanted to win this game, I was going to have to fight him. I couldn't just find an objective to sit on or anything like that. Wanted to go right into magic here. You can see I got the number six card, so not too bad. Pulled off a few dice and was able to get a spark of creation off that just completely blew one of those squigs out of the water. And then we got a silver spike off on the other one, which did, uh, I think, a couple wounds there. And then in the shooting phase here, you can see that the Spearbacks succeeded in taking off the other Mangler team. So that whole flank is taken care of as far as the harassment goes. I just have those Iron Orcs to worry about. Into the bottom of turn one. You can see that he just moved everybody right on up, got that wagon up as far as possible, uh, moved his bunker with the mage in it off to the side to let the other boar boys through, and uh, just maneuvered in a way such that if I tried to charge that wagon, I'd be stuck in the forest there without steadfast, and uh, whatever was in there was just going to get annihilated by whatever he decided to charge in with, because honestly, any of those units would spell doom for any of mine. They're just so much stronger when it comes to combat, and they always strike before I do. And he got the number one card for his magic, but it wasn't too consequential. As you can see, we just went right into turn two. As far as charges go, looks like I didn't do anything. Uh, and then in the movement, I just moved everybody around to form a kind of defensive circle around him to try and counter any kind of aggressive movements he makes. You can see I moved the Salamander off on the right-hand side to try and flank those ferals and get some good shots off. And the Spearbacks and the other Salamander are just going to open up on the Iron Orcs this turn. In my magic phase, I saved one token and got a few extra dice. We got a Silver Spike off, which took off the wagon completely. Did a really good job there. And you can see I got a Corruption of Tin off to reduce that armor save permanently. In the shooting phase, you can see we did a combination of probably like four or five wounds between the Salamander and the Spearbacks, so not too bad. Definitely taken off the points there. And then there was no combat, so we just went right into the bottom of turn two. So here's Mike's movement. You can see he charged the Salamander just to get it out of the way, and then just moved everybody right on up, including getting his Mage Bunker out of danger, because otherwise those Raptors and the Spearbacks were going to make a nightmare for him. And he moved his feral orcs real far up on the right flank and got the boar boys right up to the tip of the forest. And it looks like even though he marched, he didn't have to take any of dangerous terrain saves, or didn't fail them at least. In the magic phase, he got a twisted effigy off on my great bow, because it had been doing some damage to his iron orcs up until this point. And then in combat, he just went ahead and completely annihilated that salamander, as anyone could expect. And this is what the field looked like after combat. You can see he uh, got the iron orcs into position, ready to take a charge. But uh, I'm not sure how confident I'll be in that. Top of turn three, I made a big boneheaded mistake and forgot that he had a big armed up warlord in that unit of Adbashers, and I will come to regret it as we will see. I charged in my big unit of spears to the feral orcs in hope that I would be able to defeat them in combat. I'm thinking, get some alchemy off, I'll have some rerolls to wound. Uh, since I charged, I'm going first, right? Uh, not so much with agility 2 plus 1 puts me to 3 against his agility 5 because I didn't seem to remember the head spears for some reason. So we'll see how well that goes for me. You can probably guess. Uh, I got the number 7 card for magic, saved veil token there. Got the word of iron off on my lizards to give them a 1 up armor save in combat. 
So hopefully I can salvage something there. And I think I tried to get another corruption of tin off, but failed it. And in the shooting phase, just got a few more wounds off from those spearbacks. And then following combat here, you can see I took quite a few wounds from my initial starting number of 26 Saurus and fled from combat. Thankfully though, he wasn't able to catch me and I ran right over that salamander who stayed put so that salamander would be able to act as a useful piece of chaff in this upcoming turn. So then in Mike's turn here, you can see he went ahead and charged that salamander. And something I had neglected to mention was that in the same turn I had charged the Saurus into those feral orcs, I also attempted to charge the Feral Orcs with that Engine of the Gods and failed, which led to him being stuck out in the middle of the open, and I just had nowhere to go. So he was able to get his Iron Orcs and his Mounted Boys in there, and that is going to spell Doom for my engine. He got the number 7 card for his magic, and in the combat phase, you can see he just wiped me out. No Salamander. And then overran into the Fleeing Saurus, completely obliterating them. In combat, you can see about how well this went for my engine. Even though I did some pretty considerable wounds to the Iron Orcs, as you can see, he fell right over. And this is what everything looked like after combat. Uh, as you can see, those Iron Orcs went really far uh, with their overrun. What he had actually done in his magic phase was he had gotten Will of the Wisp off on those Orcs in order to make the charge in the first place and then use that movement to overrun with so that he would be able to have room for both the ferals and the mounted boys in the next turn. Here's what the board state looked like at the end of his turn three. Top of four here we've got my charges. I went ahead and tried to charge those boar boys with my temple guard unit but they were smart enough to flee. Went right through the mages unit and the feral orcs and the mages unit did not panic and uh, this is what we were left with. In the magic phase, I kept a token, got some cool dice, and I gotta tell you, this is just how useful the plus one to cast is on that quad lord. I rolled a nine for my casting value, you can see on the bottom there, for a plus two for an eleven, and Mike's dice just were not helping him in the least when it comes to dispelling in this game. I was having some really good magic phases, and I was able to get that silver spike through. I believe this was on the boar boys, and I was able to take off enough wounds to ultimately get him down low enough where I could start allocating shots to his mage. And then I also got a glory of gold off on my temple guard and an alchemical fire on his feral boys so he wasn't going to want to charge me in that kind of condition. And then into the shooting phase here you can see his mage's unit has been completely obliterated. Uh, the shots of the giant bow and of the spearbacks were able to completely take off the mage and his accompanying unit, netting me some useful points and a scoring unit to make up for my lost saurians. In his turn four here, you can see he went ahead and charged me anyway. The Will of the Wisp allowed his Iron Orcs to just turn right around, and he got an easy charge off with his Ferals. So uh, I guess we'll see how the Glory of Gold turns up for my Temple Guard, and whether or not it's enough to put these Orcs to rest. As you can see in the back there, in addition, his Boar Boys rallied, and are just going to be causing a nuisance for everything else in my army here. Uh, there was no magic to perform since his witch doctor was dead and no shooting, so we just went right into combat, and you can see how well it went for me. Uh, Mike's saves on his uh, feral orc boys were making up for his poor magic rolls in spades, and he was able to save a lot uh, of ward saves with his feral orcs. And in addition, I just didn't have many attacks to allocate to the iron orcs, so everybody went before I did and just went to town on these temple guard. Thankfully I had a few left so I could still make my stubborn roll at the end, but you can see they're not going to last long. Top of turn five here, you can see I charged the flank of the ferals with my torsor to try and make back some lost wounds, and moved up the spearbacks to take a shot at the mounted boys. Meanwhile, the raptors are just running for the hills. They don't want to be any part of this. I just want to keep my scoring units alive at this point. Magic, got some cool dice here, got the four card, a bunch of tokens and save two of them. And as you can see here, I cast all five of the spells in my repertoire. I had already lost Word of Iron earlier in the game due to a miscast, and <laughs> Mike's dice returned from the dead and were able to stop all of my spells. The Iron Orcs and Ferals took down the last of my Temple Guard, including the Quaddle himself, and then the Torsor fled from combat, and the Feral Orcs were able to run him down. So things are not looking too good for the Saurians. 
as you can see the skinks actually made an appearance at some point in the game other than their first deployment hiding behind the hill as Mike got so far in my field that I had to start worrying about losing them as well. And this is what the board state looked like at the end of my turn 5. Beginning of his, he went ahead and charged my uh, riders with his feral orcs and I just ran for the hills. With my cold-blooded leadership 8, I was pretty confident I was going to be able to stay on the board and secure some of my own points before the end of the game and salvage whatever I could. In addition, Mike went ahead and charged my spearbacks with his unit of riders and just completely annihilated them, of course. In my turn 6, I was unable to rally those raptor riders and they fell right off the board. His turn 6, uh, he attempted to charge my skinks there. They had to flee. So I gave him half points for him, and uh, unfortunately, this is all I have left on the board. Those chameleons sitting up in the corner and the fleeing skinks, so there's uh, not a whole lot I was able to keep from Mike whatsoever. Unsurprisingly, this game was a 20-0 for Mike. It got my butt handed to me, but it was some excellent practice for strength in numbers, I gotta say. Knowing when and when not to charge remembering to look at my opponent's army list. Like, it sounds like real basic stuff, but when you're caught up in the moment, obviously you can forget some stuff. So thanks again, Mike, for the excellent game.